Are you seeing someone? Right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's confident. Like, that's it. <laughs> like, that's confident. I'm hooked on you tonight. So many people don't know that you actually your first role was on Takalani Sisani. Yes. So you have been in the industry for long. Okay. So how old were you? When I did Takalani Sisani, yeah. I was eight. You were eight? Mm-hmm. And then how did it feel like? It was very nerve wracking, you yeah. know, because I mean you're given such a big platform mm-hmm. and at such a young age. Mm-hmm. And you need to learn I think it was four or five languages. Yeah. Because we shoot maybe two episodes a day. Uh-huh. And with all those languages at that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So it was very nerve wracking. I remember there was a time where I was like, Mama, I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> yeah. Because, sure, there's so much pressure. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you have half days at school. Yeah. You know, because now you're going to go have to shoot mm-hmm. and stuff. So. It was very it was hectic for me, mm-hmm. but I think I had a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean I was the only human like there. <laughs> yeah, everyone yeah. else was puppet. Yeah, yeah. So it was very nice because it felt like wow, mm-hmm. what I used to watch on TV, mm-hmm. now I'm doing it. Here, yeah, so. yeah. Mm-hmm. So was your mom okay with the fact that okay you are now in this industry? She was most definitely very okay with mm-hmm, it because mm-hmm. I mean. She saw my talent at a very young age. Yeah. And she just took a gamble and was like, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm going to look for an agency for this child. Yeah. And did it. So I do believe that she was well aware yeah. of what she was trying uh-huh. to get me into. So did you have an agency even when you were eight? Hmm. Oh, that's great. Hmm. Okay, so but who is Lerato? <laughs> <laughs> um, Lerato is a very shy person. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Until yeah. she gets to know you, then you can look at the shop. I... I am quite outspoken. I think you can say that I am straightforward. Yeah. I do say what I want to say only when I feel it's the right time. Yeah. I won't just say it. Uh-huh. Um, I'm a very loving person and caring. <laughs> Will your brother um, agree to the loving part? Definitely. He oh. knows it himself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm loud. Uh-huh. Yes. That I know mean, yeah. very much. <laughs> and... Um, I'm just a lover of nice things. I love life. Mm-hmm. I love laughing. Yeah. You know, I just love having a good time. Mm-hmm. Are you the last one at home? Yes. So, and you're also loud. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have been on Isibai, you have been on Intersections. Which role has been your favorite so far? My favorite is playing pretty. Yeah. Mm. Um, the role I had on Isibai, mm-hmm. yes, it might have taken me out of my comfort zone because yeah. it, I was just like, yo, I'm not this kind of a girl. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, it really did take me out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm used to playing the very timid girl. Yes. The girl, Tandis in Dava and stuff uh-huh, like that. So, uh-huh. honestly, by my role was someone who's like, you know, likes nice time with guys yeah. and stuff like that, you uh-huh. know? <laughs> so, that did take me out of my comfort mm-hmm. zone. But I think the one role that pushed me mm-hmm. to the edge mm-hmm. my, must be complete. Yeah. You know, because yeah. And it was very nice because, I mean, we'd go through the same things at the same mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Adolescence hit me, I think, at 16. Yes. Same thing with Pretty. With Pretty, yeah, yeah. So that she's my favorite. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like that. So are there any similarities between Narato and Pretty? <laughs> Not really, yes, yeah, but not really. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty is a pushover, rat is a pushover, too. yeah. But who pretty sometimes she does it when it's the wrong time, okay. So, Rato knows when to do it, mm-hmm. she knows how to play her cards mm-hmm. right. Um, outspoken, yes, also, yes. but uh, Rato acts in mom kopo, not at all. That's what, yeah, mm-hmm. okay, I get that. So, is there anything that personally you have learned from your character? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, my character always taught me to do things that make me happy. Okay. I think maybe because I'm that sort of a person that I really, when I really care about people, mm-hmm. I always put them before me. Okay. Okay. So, who pretty doesn't have that. No, if no, no, she, no. She loves something. Yeah. She's going to do it regardless. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. let's take, for example, our storyline 
of um Upiti doing this whole modeling thing. Yes, yes. You know, mm. she did it anyway. She knew yeah. very well that her mom's not going to do it. Yes, mm. they might have been mm. lies. She mm. lied about a lot of stuff. Mm. She did it anyway yeah. because that's what she wanted to do yeah. and she really loved it. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't the first time also she Akuluma yeah. She's been talking about it for a while. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing that Upiti has taught me is that I need to put myself first mm. and I need to do what makes me happy yeah. before thinking about anyone else. Yeah. How long yeah. have you been on Stimsa? Nine years. Nine years. So you started actually from the first season, from yes. the word go, right? That, that's great. Um, talking about what you are actually going through now with your storyline. So we see you now as this person who went on to pursue this career in modeling. So what, and your on-screen mother didn't actually agree with it. So what do you say to a young uh, child out there who literally wants to pursue something and their parents literally don't want them to do that particular thing? You know what? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to be brutally honest Yes, yes. I think you just shouldn't care. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's not a nice thing to say. And yes, yeah. I know my mom was going to see this. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, sometimes we need to remind ourselves yeah. that we need to live our own lives. Yeah. We can't live for our parents anymore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, we do want to make our parents proud yeah. and whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But what about us? Mm-hmm. What about the things, our dreams and aspirations? Yes, yes. You know, mm-hmm. because then you start settling for plan B, which is what they want. To yeah. Do, and yeah. not the initial mm-hmm. plan. Yeah. So my advice to any child who wants to pursue something mm-hmm. out there and really wants to do it, but their parents are not for it. Mm-hmm. I say go and do it. Mm-hmm. You know, you will uzo yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. If you fail, you will mm-hmm. pick yourself up and dust yourself off mm-hmm. and try again. Mm. And how do you deal with failure? <laughs> Yo. Mm. It's 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 a very tough one because I'm mm. I'm a sort of a person that's very scared of rejection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it it it, it I battle a lot. Mm-hmm. But I think one thing I do is that I have a very strong support structure at home. Yeah. From my big brother and my mom. Yeah. So I always seek advice from them. Yeah. And they are yeah. the people who always say, I mm-hmm. go at it again, try yeah. again. Yeah. You know, so that's how I do mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Coming back to your storyline. So now um, I want us to talk a bit about the sexual harassment in general. So we see what is happening on screen and we can all agree that what was happening is not the physical type of gender-based violence that we all maybe assume that it is where someone will just beat you up or sexually harass you can be raped or whatsoever with that one it's more into i don't know if i should say words or whatsoever but how will the next person now know that this person is violating me if it's not physical Mm. that one is very tricky Mm -hmm. you know because Sexual harassment doesn't come in the form of someone being aggressive. Yeah, yeah. Someone is very subtle. They can yeah. literally start by saying, you have really nice legs. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, but you guys are not like that. You're not comfortable. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. Or someone will say, hmm, I wonder what you have under your dress or something yeah, like that. You yeah, understand? Yeah. It's very subtle. Mm-hmm. And you never really know because it continues to like, yeah. What is this person really yeah. trying to say yeah. to me? Yeah. You understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you never really know, but the moment you become uncomfortable, yeah. that person is already a bi- mm-hmm. violated. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, and then what's your what's your take on um, sexual harassment uh, in the industry that you are in? Yeah. I think <clears throat> a lot of us females, mm-hmm. and especially as young ones yeah. have been subjected to sexual harassment. It's just we didn't understand yeah, yeah. what it was and mm-hmm. um, how one can even just report it because sometimes it's done by people who are supposed to protect us. Yeah. Um, by older characters. Yeah. Who, yeah. Even if you were to speak as a child, mm-hmm. people will be like, ah, are really? you even sure? Yes. You yes, know, yeah. because... And let's just be honest, in the black community, now Kuluma, yeah. about someone violating you. Mm. They always think, I, this child. No, yeah, it's as if, like, you're not even telling the truth. No, yeah. or you could be making it up. Yes, you yes. Know, because yeah. there are children who are like that. Mm, mm. But then when do you know when to believe the child? Mm. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, do? yeah. So um, a lot of us have been subjected to that. Mm-hmm. And it's sad because only now yeah we are coming out about it mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. only now we are able to share our stories mm. but in actual fact if we if 
we had the courage to do it and also mm-hmm. we were able to go to certain people in the company yeah. and talk about it mm-hmm. we wouldn't have been damaged the way that you yeah. are in our yeah. mind yeah. because I know a lot of us yeah. don't even trust some of our, our, our male, our, our male yes. co-stars or yeah. whatever it is mm. because of the, the, the behavior we've been subjected to have you ever experienced it personally? sexual harassment? yeah Oh, and then how did you deal with it? <laughs> um, like I said, yeah. it also came to me in a manner of very subtleness. So I didn't yeah. know. Yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. I, I'd always just tell people as a joke and then I'd see, okay, how what's their reaction? Yeah. And then, okay, then I'll just take it from there, okay. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not going to report this out of it, but I have. Did it continue or it stopped? No, it stopped. Yeah. Obviously, if you don't give that person attention or yeah. you, you, you don't follow the things that they say or you don't even like look in the direction, it, it finishes. Yeah. But mm-hmm. that person will always have that thing that, Ish, I want to say this to Lavato and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. You know, do you understand yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then what is, what is your take on, um, I don't know if I should say it's a movement or just the hashtag open up the industry? <laughs> You know, this is not the first time yeah. <laughs> someone asked me about this. Yeah. Let me tell you. Mm-hmm. Open up the industry is a real thing. Yeah. And I don't think us as actors have the ability to open up the industry. Okay. It's the people on the inside mm-hmm. who have the ability, the writers, the casting directors, mm-hmm. to do that. Yeah. Because we don't go ourselves and say, hey, pick me. Yes, yes. Everyone is given a fair chance mm-hmm. to audition. Mm-hmm. And, but my thing is, if someone has, is more talented than, than Lerato, yeah, and is able to play a character mm-hmm. who is someone that is not known and is upcoming, yeah, give them a chance. Yeah. But, let it be fair. Mm-hmm. All of us then should get a chance also. Even mm-hmm. us people who have been in the industry, because people are like to me, you old Rato, I believe that you, you've, you've been in the industry for long. Do you think you've achieved, you've achieved a lot? No, yeah. I haven't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are so many other roles that I would love to play. Mm-hmm. And I'd love to be given the opportunity to play. Yeah. But if someone out there is better and more skilled mm-hmm. to play that mm-hmm. role than mm-hmm. I am, yeah, then so be it. Mm-hmm. That person should be given a fair chance. All yeah. of us should, actually. Mm. But do you think that fairness exists? Not precisely. Mm-hmm. I, you know what, now... Mm. I do believe that there are shows that are casting people because they have numbers on social media. Yeah. So they do know that people are going to watch. Yeah, yeah. If X, Y is there on yes, the show. Yes, We're not even chasing the talent anymore. We're yeah. always just chasing viewership and numbers mm-hmm. and how well will um, our social media maybe account do mm-hmm. because of this person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get that. And how did you get your role on Skin Sum? <laughs> I auditioned. Okay. Mm. Okay, and then uh, how did the whole thing go? Did you see um, uh, an ad or what? How did so? Okay, the process. When you have an agent, mm-hmm. an agent will phone you and say, "Listen, there's a new show that's coming. What mm-hmm. dot, 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 the brief they gave us mm-hmm. fits you. Okay, like, we think you should go. Mm. You go to the audition. Many other children were there. Yeah, yeah. But um, a lot of the children weren't. Because I'm the same age as Pretty. Yeah. So they weren't. Mm-hmm. They're either older than her mm-hmm. or younger. Yeah, yeah. So I auditioned the first time and I was like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Second time, then it was callbacks. So you're still nervous by then? I was because I was just mm-hmm. like, why is they callbacks? Why don't they just say you got to redeem <laughs> Yeah, it? yeah. You see? Yeah. Then I went to a second callback mm-hmm. also where then they were trying to see if our family will match because then the second callback yeah. I went with my mother. Okay. The, the lady who was supposed to play my mother. Okay. So media getting wasn't the that wasn't the, the person oh, I auditioned with okay. the second All time, right. the second callback I had. Then it happened. Then after that the next call I got was you got the job. Yeah. yeah. And that was it. That was mm-hmm. it. So were you ready so were you ready for this limelight at the time? I don't believe so. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was only 11 at the time. Yeah, yeah. And I always used to ask myself, yo, when am I going to get the recognition? When are people going to start recognizing me and saying, yo, you want to take pictures with you? Yeah, like that. yeah. Little did I know that, okay. that it would be this hit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was not ready for it. Yeah, before. yeah. And then how do you keep up now with the expectations of the fans? When you pull up, they think there's a certain type of clothes you should be wearing. 
there's a certain type of a car you should be driving, all those things. I don't try and keep up with the expectations mm-hmm. because then now I'm not living for myself, I'm living for okay. them. Yeah. You understand what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm that sort of a person that you should take me as I am. Yeah. If yeah. you can't, then it's fine. Mm-hmm. And I think what we need, people need to start realizing is that even as people that you see on TV, yeah, 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 we have bad days. Mm-hmm. We have days where we don't even want to talk to anyone and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And we then can't be expected to be like puppets. Mm-hmm. When they say you must jump, you must jump. Uh-uh. But when it's a normal person, they're like, mm-hmm. oh, Pelanax is Zala Abu Mama. How Tina is Zala in. Yeah. <laughs> story. Story. yeah. 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 So um, I don't even try to keep up to expectations mm-hmm. at all. So on a bad day when you're probably by the mall and someone wants pictures, not even one, a few of them, how do you deal with it? We can take pictures. Okay. Let's just be civil with each other. Let's mm-hmm. each other. Hi, how are you? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Can I please take a picture? Yeah, okay, that's fine. Okay. So, but even if you are having a bad day, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean you can now try and make someone else's day. Because mm-hmm. you don't know what they're going mm-hmm. through. Mm-hmm. You understand what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, um... Yes, I understand. You can't please everybody. Yeah. And there is a time where I'm going to get tired and I'm like, ah, no, I don't I want to do yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. And it happens. I'm mm-hmm. just like, ah, I don't want to mm. just do it. I understand that Lerato and Pretty they're of the same age. So how did you deal with your studies? <laughs> yeah, it was very hectic. But yeah. um, because my mom is a teacher and stuff, yeah. she was very strict. Mm-hmm. And that's where the discipline came in. Okay. So I always knew that when my day starts from 8 until 2, yeah. I'm at school. Okay. From half past 2 till maybe 6, uh-huh. I'm at work. Yeah. Then when I come back, I need to try and catch up from the hours that I wasn't at home, mm-hmm. which is doing homework yeah. and studying also. Okay. So I didn't have the time that all the other children had yeah, yeah. to study and do homework and yeah. stuff like that. And they are able to sleep early. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have that because then I'd only get home at 7. Mm-hmm. Then now you must start yeah. doing homework. And, and also study. what about, um, and also going through your scripts and all that, you, you needed that time also. Also. Yo, it must have been hectic. Hmm. So Lerata, are you a DJ? Yes. Oh, wow. DJ. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, okay. Yeah. So... My love for DJing started mm-hmm. when my brother introduced me to Deep House. Is he a DJ also? No. Okay. My brother's a sound engineer. Okay. So um, I was like, wow, this sound is so mature. Then. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And I, he'd constantly play these songs. I remember there's a song that I just can't remember the name. I think, I, I don't know the name of the song. Yeah. But the song goes, ah. Hooked on you tonight. I think it came out in 2012. <laughs> right? Yeah. So my brother would always play the song. And when I'd wash the dishes, uh-huh. I'd imagine myself playing for people. Yeah. So that's how everything started for me. And that's it. And I remember I'd always I'd always ask my cousins just yeah. as a joke, what would yeah. you guys say if I was a DJ? Yeah. They'd love like, what can we say? <laughs> what, can we say? Yeah. what can we say? Yeah. Then I remembered in 2018 mm-hmm. that I once saw um, Charles Mo and Mome's yes. reality, the very first reality show. I they remember, had. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mome went to Soul Candy mm-hmm. to learn how to do it. Yes, yes. And I remember that. I went to Soul Candy. Yeah. Oh, now it's under Boston. Ha! Huh? I applied. Yeah. I told no one. <laughs> After a while. So, I, so you I, told no one? No one. Are you being? After a while, I tell my brother, I'm like, yeah. this is what I did. He's like, oh, okay. So I think my mom also thought I was joking mm-hmm. until I went with her to go and actually fill in the application form, yeah, yeah. pay for the tuition. Yeah. And her mom was like, are you serious? I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm yeah. actually doing this. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, okay. Then I told no one. Mm-hmm. I went I went to school. I went, I went, I went. Yeah, I went. I remember we even wrote a, a practical exam. Yeah. That's DJ. Mm-hmm. Then we did theory also. Yeah. When I came out of it, I started telling people, people were like, what the hell are you crazy. lying? <laughs> you are lying. I was like, okay, I'll invite you one day. Yeah. I have a gig. Mm-hmm. And that was it. And that was, So do you often go with your brother then when you have gigs and stuff? My brother is never available. Oh. But my very first gig, yes, uh-huh. my brother was. Mm-hmm. 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 Just for support. And it was a mess. <laughs> Yo, that was the worst gig I of my life. What happened? What happened? 
I don't know. I think I just had stage fright. Yeah. Mm. But now so it was a mess. <laughs> yeah. But now yeah. I'm a lot better. Uh-huh. And I I do wish my brother can actually come and see how no, I he should out. come. He should Are you going to come, brother? Yes, 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 guys. <laughs> so now I want just to also talk about your love for motorsport. Okay. Um, my love. Um, you know, um, a lot of these things are always <laughs> influenced by my big brother. Um, uh-huh. my brother introduced me to Top Gear. Okay. Um, I can't even remember how old I was, uh-huh. but before that, um, my brother had. Um, the whole two seasons of Yizo Yizo. Okay. So I always knew my favorite character was it was just then for the action. Okay. Right? So me and my brother would always react like the scenes and stuff like uh-huh. that. And um, my brother and I also are lovers of the Ithati. Okay. Ikushesh. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's where everything just started before he even introduced me to Top Gear. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's when I started loving. Just I fell in love with BMW from mm-hmm, there, mm-hmm. you know. And then after that, when he introduced me to Top Gear, yeah. I listened. That's it. <laughs> you were in. I was fully, 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 fully. In. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so do you ever go to these ones in the townships where they would have, I don't know what they call them, you know, when they have when all they these, spin. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have been to a few spinning shows. Yeah. My mom's going to kill me. <laughs> I was in high school at the time. Oh, my no. mom didn't want me to go. Like, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. when you're a child, ne? Mm-hmm. you become open to your mom and you tell her, hey, this is what I love. My mom's like, yeah. never, mm-hmm. never, mm-hmm. never. Ha, I was like, hmm, she doesn't know me. Yeah. Oh, I went. <laughs> I went. Nah. Yeah. I attended them. Did your brother know? No. Nobody I knew. Know. Nobody knew. Yeah. <laughs> Only the people I was with. <laughs> <laughs> and they understood. And I think the people could tell, like, the love in my eyes. Yeah. You know, I remember mm-hmm. the very first one I went to and I saw... Uh, there's a spinner, his name is Magesh. Yeah. I remember I cried. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, guys. So you knew Magesh before going to the event? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was, I knew about Magesh, mm. Jeff James. Mm. Uh, you I think it's Southside Crew also. Yeah. I just knew a lot of them, uh-huh, uh-huh. right? So I remember when I first saw him in action, you know, I cried. I'm like, what oh, the hell? Right. Yeah. And then I saw Stacy in action. Mm-hmm. The girl who drives the pink, the pink BA. Yeah. And I was like, no way, guys. I can do this also. Okay. And that was my next so, question. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no way, guys. This. Yeah. So that's where my love for, for driving came about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I remember I'd always tell my brother, I might teach me how to drive. Yeah. And he never wanted to. Yeah. And then I asked my mom. I'm like, mama, teach me how to drive. I remember I was in grade nine at the time. Uh-huh. She's like, okay, this is what you must do. She's like, you must always watch me when I change gears and stuff. Like yeah. That. Yeah, watch out, watch out. She said, come this side. Yay! Yeah. The very first time. <laughs> yeah. Rakena Timung, I remember we went to Don Park. Yeah! <laughs> but from then, yeah. when we'd visit my grandmother, mm-hmm. my mom would give me the car, the car at a yeah. certain area where she where knew that I could not get in. Yeah. Then. Mm-hmm. Oh, again. And that was it. And when that did you get it. your license? Oh, my license in 2018. That's late. Just. Two just ago. after two years ago, okay, you were just about up. Were you uh, over eighteen by then? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because now you're twenty one. Oh, okay. That's fine. Are you seeing someone right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's confidential. I can't say. Why? <laughs> well, that's confidential. <laughs> really? Okay, but I can see through the eyes, guys. Hi. <laughs> it says nothing. <laughs> Why I say nothing, guys? Nothing. <laughs> what more can we expect from preaching? Kitty is a, is a growing character. Mm-hmm. I can't precisely say what, mm-hmm. but just know she's growing a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, we are going to see her transitioning from becoming a young adult mm-hmm. into, a, into adulthood. Yeah, yeah. So she's growing a lot, mm-hmm. and I think she's finding herself more. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And this is the end of our video. Thank you. What, anything that you want to say? Yeah. Okay. This is for 
all the young people yeah. who are going to watch this or are watching right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I want you guys to know that never let anyone or anything stop you. Always, and I know it's selfish to, sh- to say, mm-hmm. but this year taught me to choose myself first. Mm-hmm. To 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 make myself happy first. You yeah. know what it's like yeah. when you when you board onto an airplane mm-hmm. when they're giving you instructions on what to do. Yeah. If yeah. you guys are to get into a disaster, mm-hmm. they always say put your mask on first. Yeah. Then help someone else. Mm-hmm. So that's what you need to do also. Mm-hmm. Help yourself first, first yeah. before you can help the next person. Mm-hmm. And don't put a limit to what you want to do. Don't put a limit on your dreams. Don't put a limit on your aspirations also. Mm-hmm. Don't say nothing figure like yeah, okay. Peggy. Mm. Always make sure that whatever you do, you give it your best, you give it your all. And most importantly, mm-hmm. don't give up. Yeah. When you fall, dust yourself off. Mm-hmm. Carry on again. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. How can people get hold of you? On Instagram, mm-hmm. it's Larato Marave. You guys will see Nezi over there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, on Twitter, it's Lili yeah. Marabe. Mm-hmm. And then on Facebook also, it's Lerato mm-hmm. Marabe. Okay. Do you like to dance? Yeah. I do. Okay. All right. Guys, this is the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please make sure that you subscribe and don't forget to watch all the videos we out. Bye. Bye.